from Doggy You, and if you've never been to this channel before, I'm a certified guide dog trainer instructor, as well as a service dog trainer and trick dog trainer who travels all over the country, placing guide dogs with their handlers, as well as helping people online train their service dog. So if that interests you, make sure you subscribe to this channel for all of our new videos, as well as support the channel by checking out the Patreon page at patreon.com slash doggyyou, where you'll have access to monthly live Q and A's with me, as well as tons of bonus content. So today we're gonna to be talking about service dog etiquette for handlers. So there's a lot of videos out there on how other people should behave around service dogs. But today's video, I wanna focus on how dogs, our service dogs should behave out in public. So we're gonna be talking about best practices and etiquette when you go out and train with your service dog in public access. So let's get started. public working a service dog, I want to hold myself and my dog up to a high standard of behavior that really shows off the hundreds of hours of work and training that I've put into this dog, makes it easier for others to ignore the dog, and gets those really nice comments that really are a feather in your cap when someone says, wow, that dog is so well behaved and trained. That's what I'm looking for when I'm out working my service dog. Now I'm not suggesting here that dogs need to be robots because no animal is a robot and mistakes and bad days are definitely gonna happen. But what I do wanna lay out, especially for those that are new to service dogs, is some service dog etiquette to help you along your service dog journey. And I already know I'm gonna get comments like, my dog can't do X because to task they need to do Y. I get it, totally understand. These etiquette suggestions may not apply to every single person, but they will apply to the majority of service dogs. All right, let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is having a well-maintained dog. We want the dog to look the part, meaning that they look generally well-groomed, they don't stink, they're potty trained, and they're generally quiet. What we're looking for is that mark of a really good service dog where you're at a restaurant, your dog's under the table, and then they come out from under the table and everyone around is like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know there was a dog under there. That's kind of the mark that we're looking for is a nice, well-maintained, quiet dog that looks the part. Another best practice when you're out with your service dog is dogs belong on the floor. They don't belong in any place where a person is going to be seated or their groceries or food are going to be. I was recently out in Colorado and I passed by a restaurant where there was a 90 pound coated German Shepherd on a bench seat at the restaurant. That's not good etiquette when we're talking about service dogs. We want our service dogs to be inconspicuous. This applies to restaurants, stores, and in Ubers or on buses. Putting your dog on the backseat of an Uber is generally bad form. Train your dog to lay on the floor of the back seat like you would on a plane, or ask to ride in the front passenger seat with your dog between your legs. I regularly do this with a 90 pound dog. It is possible for large breeds to fit into small spaces with training. No dog butts on human spaces also applies to grocery carts. If for some reason your dog is required to be close to your chest to be able to do their specific task, make sure you put them in a backpack or a front sling to make sure that you can accommodate that for tasking. Unless otherwise needed for tasking, your dog should generally be in the heel position on a relatively short leash. Their noses shouldn't be in the products at stores. Their leash and position shouldn't be long enough that someone can trip over it. You should be able to easily navigate a medium to large size dog with a short traffic leash or use a multifunction leash if you need be to be able to switch between lengths so that the leash can be short in stores. Although we want to remember that your dog should be able to be under control no matter the length of the leash. At counters, the dog should be positioned between you and the counter if possible. This prevents people from messing with the dog and the dog from getting into stuff and from people accidentally stepping on your dog. Service dogs should never be fed from the table at restaurants, and we certainly don't want to put a, clate, a plate that you've been using to eat off of down for your dog to lick. That's a big no-no. They also shouldn't be fed by anyone who isn't you while in harness or vested. Feeding dogs from the table creates bad public perception. If you're still in training mode with your dog and using treats, make sure they come from a treat pouch. And if you're not at the stage where treats are infrequent, continue training at dog-friendly outdoor areas until your dog is better trained for restaurant public access. Ultimately, we want our service dogs to be well behaved and held to a high standard out in public when we're working them. This means that not all dogs are gonna be ready for those difficult places right away. 
I highly recommend continuing to train in pet friendly spaces while your dog's still learning. So you can go to places like Lowe's, Barnes and Noble, Nordstrom's, um, outdoor restaurants and breweries to get your dog lots of exposure and practice in these difficult locations before you level up to these spaces that don't allow pets. All right, everyone, I hope you found this video on service dog etiquette for handlers useful. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions on videos you'd like to see, make sure you comment down below. Also, if you want to support the channel and get direct access to me and lots of bonus content, check out Patreon at patreon.com slash doggy you. You all have an awesome day and happy training. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video. Subscribe now and never miss an episode.